Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. A macro is a little program that you create in a visual environment that runs a series or a set of operations in a specified order. For example, an access macro could check the value of a form field and then open a corresponding report based on the selected value of that field. When you write macros, you will need to know both the actions, what you want to do for each step in the macro, and the arguments, which are additional settings that specify more exactly what you want each action to do. To make macro creation easier, Access comes with a macro design window. The window consists of two panes. The upper pane is called the action pane and contains a design grid similar to the QBE grid that's used in creating queries. This design grid can contain up to five columns. The action and arguments and comment columns are displayed by default. Now in the actions columns you click and select one of the many actions that are available that you want the macro to perform. Then in the lower section called the action arguments pane you will enter any additional settings that the selected action needs in order to function into the appropriate fields within this section. Depending on the type of macro that you're writing the arguments will vary considerably. Some actions simply require that you define more arguments than others do. Many have default arguments that you can change if you wish. Some arguments have no default value, but instead allow you to enter your own expression. Also, some arguments are required for an action to work. For example, if you select the Open Report action, then you must specify the name of the report to open. As you enter the arguments into the boxes available in the Action Arguments panel, their values will be displayed at the right in the Arguments column above. Access displays help about the currently selected argument at the right of the Action Arguments pane when you have an argument selected. If you click into an arguments text box in this pane and then press the F1 key on your keyboard, a help window will appear to lend you even more assistance in specifying the arguments needed for the selected action. This can be helpful when programming macro behavior. You then move to the next line and continue selecting the next action to perform and what arguments that needs. Now when you've finished setting all of the actions and arguments that you wish, you will have your macro completed. It's just that easy. Now the other column that's always displayed is the comment column, into which you can type a brief description of the action that's being performed. You can optionally display the macro name column, into which you can type a name for a section of actions within a macro. You can also display the Condition column, which allows you to specify conditions under which a macro may run a specified action. Once you have created a macro, you should save it so that you can run it in the future when needed. When you are creating programs, they are usually designed to be run multiple times, so give it a name that will help you remember its function within the database. Running a macro is easy. You can right click on the name of any macro from the list displayed in the navigation pane and then choose the run command from the pop-up menu to run the program. You may also simply double click on the name of a macro shown in the navigation pane to run it as well. Usually after testing them, you will need to edit macros to tweak the little problems that you may notice. Another way to run macros in Access is to open them in Design View, 
and then click the Run button in the Tools group on the Design tab of the Macro Tools Contextual tab within the ribbon. Editing a macro is easy as well. You can simply right click on the name of the macro to edit within the navigation pane and then select the design view command in the pop-up menu that appears to display the design view of the macro. Here you can change the macro actions and arguments as needed and then save it again to run it. Once it's operating appropriately, you may want to consider adding the macro to a command button's on-click event within a form in your database. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.